Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Together, glory, great and wonderful are your deeds, O Lord God, the Almighty. Just and true are your ways, O Sovereign of the nations, who shall not revere and praise your name, O Lord, for you alone are holy. All nations shall come and worship in your presence, where your just dealings have been revealed. To the one who is seated on the throne and to the Lamb, be blessing and honor, glory and might, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, the author and giver of all good things, graft in our hearts the love of your name, increase in us true religion, nourish us with all goodness, and bring forth in us the fruit of good works through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, here I am. Then he said, come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians, and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, <laughs> I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus, you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my title for all generations. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> The psalm for today is Psalm 105. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory is his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. 
remember the marvels he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen. Israel came out, came into Egypt, and Jacob became the sojourner in the land of Ham. The Lord made his people exceedingly fruitful. He made them stronger than their enemies. Whose heart he turned, so that they hated his people, and dealt unjustly with his servants. He sent Moses his servant, and Aaron whom he had chosen. Hallelujah. Second reading, reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, 12, 9, 21. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who, per who, who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if the enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory, to, Glory you. to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to, to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those whose life who, who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what, he has been, what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. O oh Lord, help us to be masters of ourselves, that we might be the servants of others. Take our minds and think through them. Take our lips and speak through them. And take our hearts and set them on fire 
for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. Well, I think that one of the most moving stories in the Bible is this account of Moses and the burning bush. I'll confess that I'm kind of guilty of seeking God on mountaintops. After all, I actually have had a mountaintop ecstasy experience in my past as a youth. The challenge for all of us, however, is to remember that God can be passed every step of the way up the mountain. The Bible says that Moses leaves Egypt because he murders an Egyptian slave master. He fled to the Sinai Peninsula, to Midian, and there he married Zipporah, daughter of Jethro. Now Moses is going about his chores, tending his father-in-law's sheep, and he sees what's just an ordinary bush at first. Then suddenly it was on fire and the power of the Lord, either an angel from God or God himself, he hears a voice that tells him, Moses, Moses, put off your shoes from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. And what follows is the call of Moses to be a prophet. Now Moses is reluctant, refusing four times. Now Moses has reasons not to return to Egypt. Not the least of it is the difficulty and the challenges of freeing God's people from slavery. And yet he does return because he believes that God is sending him. Moses accepts God's call by saying, here I am. And that changes everything in his life. And it can in our lives as well. I believe deeply that God can and is going to bring good things to you. He's going to make things happen to you that you could have never seen happen. Now, you may have been through some disappointments. People and circumstances may have come against you, and, and, and now you've settled to where you are. You're not expecting anything good. Every voice tells you that it's never going to happen. But don't believe those voices. Just like Moses, he heard the voice of the Lord and gave it and gave him and it gave him a new fire. And it's not only going to give you new fire, a new passion, but it's going to push you into your own destiny. And you'll have wisdom and the right doors will open and things will fall into place. And you'll step into God's purpose for your life. The famous Trappist monk. Thomas Merton said that vocation does not come from a voice out there calling me to be something I am not. It comes from a voice in here calling me to be the person I was born to be, to fulfill the original selfhood given me at birth by God. For Moses, as for us, there's only one thing that Merton goes on to say that we must do, and that is to fulfill our own destiny and be what God wants us to be. Now, deep down, we hunger, I think, for the presence of God and a larger purpose for our lives. What if our lives could be like Moses? saturated with the reality of God. Now we can refuse to listen, refuse to go on the mountaintop, close ourselves off from the Holy One who calls us out by name. We can say no to God and lead our lives with no intrusion, no disruption, no redefinition, and no appearance of the Holy in our lives. Or we can just think there must be an easier way to God. There's a story of a young man who is ready and eager to make his way to the top. So he seeks out this well-known millionaire businessman, and he asks him the first reason for his success. And the businessman answered without hesitation, hard work. After a lengthy pause, the young man asked, 
What's the second reason? The reality is there is no easy way when God calls us. Following God, accepting the challenges of life, and finding our purpose and mission in life can't come without some great effort. In our gospel this morning, we hear Jesus and his disciples were in Caesarea Philippi. And up to this point, their ministry had been successful. Throngs of people everywhere. Jesus was feeding and teaching the masses and the thousands. People were eager to hear and touch this young, charismatic Jesus. The disciples are caught up in the excitement when Jesus asks, who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answers unreservedly, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It was the most dramatic moment on their pilgrimage with Jesus. Yes, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus just throws an ice bucket of cold water on this whole scene and, and changes the subject by telling them that the crowds would soon turn against him and that he would be crucified. And on the third day, he'd be raised from the dead. Now, the disciples are probably shocked, and Simon Peter takes, a, takes Jesus aside. Forbid it, Lord, that these things should happen to you. And Jesus' response to Simon Peter is, as harsh as any words in the New Testament, get behind me, Satan. You are not on the side of God, but of man. Now, maybe Jesus is calling him Satan because of Jesus' own experience of being tempted in the wilderness. And Jesus recognizes that Satan is simply speaking through Peter. It was there in that desert, remember, in that, that, the, in that desert wilderness that Satan wanted to lure Jesus into the easy way of turning a million dollars in three easy steps or turning stones into bread or leaping off the pinnacle of the temple if Jesus would simply bow down and worship me, he said. Instant success, instant glamour, instant gratification is offered everywhere today. Jesus encountered him this time in Simon Peter. Forbid it, Lord, that you should have to suffer and die. There is no doubt that Jesus is resisting the lure of the easy way. Just listen to these words again. If any man would be my disciple, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Anyone here who is a successful person, either in business, your profession, or in your personal life, knows these important truths or has practiced them in life. And these truths are the key to Jesus' message and the truth that many of the best teachers in the world have taught. Devotees of the easy way in life hate these two truths. But those who are wise know these two important truths. And the first one is that the path to personal success is that of self-denial. And the second related truth is that self-denial is essential to the salvation of of the world. Remember some years ago when a British soldier was beheaded in broad daylight outside his barracks? The Telegraph newspaper reported that a mother and a Cub Scout leader, Ingrid Loya Kennett, age 48, confronted the terrorists immediately after the grisly murder. She was one of the first people on the scene. While one of the terrorists held a bloodied knife, she selflessly engaged the terrorist in conversation in an attempt to prevent him from killing others. A Christian blog called First Things 
noted that the real factor that motivated Mrs. Loya Kennett to risk her life and get involved was her Christian faith. She said, I live my life as a Christian. I believe in thinking about others and loving thy neighbor. We all have a duty to look after each other. Denying self is seldom that dramatic or high profile, but it is often that demanding. That brave woman understood that her faith is less about her own personal well being and more about obeying God and loving humanity. Now, I'm deeply aware that, that life can be hard and cruel. And many of us come to church seeking comfort and the lifting of our burdens from our hearts. We come seeking a God who can bind up our broken hearts. We come seeking a savior. And that desire is very reasonable. But in the midst of that deep desire, here are the words of Jesus. Whoever cares for his own safety is lost. But if a man will let himself be lost for my sake, he will find his true self. So in the midst of discovering Jesus, the comforting savior, Jesus says to them that they must devote their whole lives to God, to deny themselves, not reserving any part for personal goals. Be willing to give up physical safety and comfort, accepting martyrdom if necessary. Only this path will lead to a true life with God. Judaism's rabbis also taught the idea that the faithful should be willing to face martyrdom for their beliefs, saying the words of the law are only established in a man who would die for them. God made us with a drive to live and achieve distinction and greatness. Now listen, this drive can work for epic and creative accomplishments, or it can lead us down a path of destructive behavior, and at worst, the exploitation of others in the pursuit of your own happiness. Jesus is not condemning this need and desire for achievement and greatness in his disciples. He is just redirecting their energies. What Jesus is doing is he's turning on the lights so that they could see and journey to authentic greatness. And here's another truth in today's lesson. Jesus took this powerful drive in us and redirected it away from ourselves toward God and toward all of God's human family. If you are worthy of me, Jesus is saying, then take up your cross and follow me. Seek only your life's success and you'll miss out. Lose your life for my sake and you will find life that is meaningful, authentic, and enduring. Our partnership in meeting the needs of all of God's family is an unqualified condition to gaining life's deepest meaning. Lose yourselves in love for the human family. And we find that divine love that will never let us go. <clears throat> Bear a burden and find a joy. Soothe another's wounds and you are healed. A church whose mission is to hold these two tensions together will lead people to more passionate and meaningful lives. Jesus is saying that the only life that you can have that's worth living is a life where you stand with all my children. 
stand firmly against everything that lures people to obscenely deny their precious worth as human beings. Being a bold, audacious, and courageous witness to life, that's what it means to take up the cross and follow me. And that's the message that Jesus would speak to you and to me. There's an Irish uh, superstition that it is not safe to die until you've taken a stick and marked the earth with a cross. I would raise that to a deeper and higher meaning, not superstition, but reality. Leave somewhere on this earth the sign of the cross of love. Leave that sign written boldly with your life. Mark the earth with signs of love, and you will have marked your part of the world with the work of success. That is the sign of an authentic life. That is the goal of the Christian and human pilgrimage. Mother Theodore Guerin, a saint and the foundress of the Sisters of the Providence of St. Mary of the Woods, said, she said, we are not called upon to do all the good that is possible, but only that which we can do. During this time that we have left on earth, on this journey that we call our lives, fill it with love, with service to those in need. Give yourself away, forgetting the pain, knowing that God can work through your love. Ultimately, the call of Moses was not really about who Moses was, it was about who was with Moses. Moses and Jesus both had the staying power to go the full course of their mission because they knew that God was with them on their life's journey. And it was marked with and captured by a great cause. Let us pray. God, be with us as we journey through life. Never let us journey alone on this earthly pilgrimage. Journey with each, let us journey with each other, with companions and with the grace of God. When we claim that your grace in our lives, we receive your power to live fully and we are strengthened on our walk. Amen. And now let us affirm our faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him, all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. Yes. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he's worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. 
we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For those for whom our prayers have been requested this past week, especially Edna Kerr, Patrick, Xander, Lynn, and Susan C., Mary E., Carson, Donna R., and all whose needs are known to God, we continue our prayers for victims of violence throughout the world, for all travelers in our parish community, for all serving in our armed forces at home and abroad, and for the families and friends who await their safe return, especially Evan Gardner, Daniel Thomas, and for all veterans who have served. We pray for all who have died of the coronavirus, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. On the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the United Church of South India. On the Diocesan cycle of prayer, we pray for the clergy and people of St. David's, San Diego. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty Father, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We commend, we commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your internal kingdom. <clears throat> Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. O most mighty and merciful God, in this time of great sickness, we flee to you for relief and comfort. Deliver us, we beseech you, from our peril. Give strength and skill to all those who minister to the sick. Prosper the means made use for their cure. Comfort those who mourn or who are in great financial distress. Endue our leaders with wisdom and courage and grant that perceiving how frail and uncertain our life is, we may apply our hearts to that heavenly wisdom which leads to eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Extend to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace. What birthdays or anniversaries do we have to celebrate today? Any birthdays, anniversaries? My dad's birthday was yesterday. Fantastic, Liz. My brother has been celebrated their fifth anniversary yesterday. Wonderful. Uh -huh. And 
Grant's turning seven today or on Tuesday. So I would normally hold this for next week, but we aren't going to have a uh, regular service next week. But so I'll, I'll bring it up now. Our, our son and daughter-in-law second wedding anniversary is next Sunday. So. Congratulations to them. <clears throat> My sister-in-law, Anna and brother-in-law Shane are celebrating their 27th wedding anniversary today. Great. Wow. <laughs> My brother John had his 70th birthday this week, and my sister-in-law, Marianne, is about to on the 31st. And Michael just texted that his sister-in-law's birthday and Nancy's parents' wedding anniversary. Oh, here are parents have been married a very long time. Lots of anniversaries, lots of birthdays, much to celebrate in our lives. And I wanna welcome those who are joining us, perhaps for the first time, or who haven't been with us for a while, uh, welcome. And we're glad that you have um, bypassed the technological barriers that might bring you to us. And so we're, we're happy you're with us this morning. As <clears throat> we mentioned, um, as Dale mentioned, we will be uh, joining with the diocese next week and the bishop will be doing a special uh, Labor Day weekend service uh, for all of us. But we will have an announcement about our adult education forum um, and it was in the bulletin this week, so I'll save that for later, later announcements. <clears throat> and now we welcome Martha and her lovely voice with a beautiful <laughs> song for us today. Thank you, Martha. This cathedral in her mouth, <laughs> as she says. <laughs> to life takes unexpected turns contrary to what one anticipates who plots a path through hell's uneasy streets to reach the peace of heaven's sturdy gates we meet the warm transforming love of god embrace and praise it yet misunderstand that love to reach and warm a wider world flows often crosswise to the ways we've planned our peace in peace as lies before our eyes one peace runs with and one against the grain these meet and point to heaven when we bind god's great love in us to the world's great pain tell out my soul thank you martha please join me as we all pray the birthday and anniversary prayer as we lift up all those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries uh, this week with us <clears throat> let us pray watch over thy servants O lord as their days increase bless and guide them wherever they may be strengthen them when they stand Comfort them when discouraged or sorrowful. Raise them up if they fall. And in their hearts, may thy peace, which passeth understanding, abide all the days of their lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. All things come from thee, O Lord. And of thine own have we given thee. And let us now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now our prayer for spiritual communion. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving. We remember your death, Lord Christ. We proclaim your resurrection. We await your coming in glory. Since we cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Our prayer for general thanksgiving. God, our creator, our center, our friend, we thank you for our good life, for those who are dear to us, for our dead, and for all who have helped and influenced us. We thank you for the measure of freedom we have and the extent to which we control our lives. And most of all, we thank you for the faith that is in us, for our awareness of you and our hope in you. Keep us, we pray you, thankful and hopeful and useful until our lives shall end. <coughs> Amen. The blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. And now our announcements, please. Hello. Uh, just a couple announcements. Um, as Father said, that uh, next uh, Sunday we're not going to have a grace service. There's going to be a diocesan <laughs> wide service. I have a problem with that word. Um, we'll still, uh, and afterwards, there, we're going to have the adult formation series, the history of the church. The, uh, the syllabus is in our take notes. We'll log in just like we do for Sunday service. Um, so just pretend you're logging in for church. Also, the Amazon Smile for Richland School. Remember, we're still doing that, and the instructions are in the meeting or in the take notes um and that's about the important stuff georgia did you want to talk about volunteers for packing up the uh, upstairs coach house well we have a tentative date for them to yeah. lay carpet upstairs and we will be able to save literally thousands of dollars by packing up the materials that are upstairs um, ourselves. So I'm looking for some volunteers to come in maybe one or two at a time wearing your masks and to be mm -hmm. able to pack up things upstairs, either putting them in the um, attic or putting them in um, the offices. And then those office materials will need to be shuffled out into the main room again as they carpet the um, offices. There will be a couple of strong arms to help us uh, with that. Um, so if you are physically unable to be moving these heavy boxes, but just be, would be willing to help pack up the boxes that somebody else could move them, that would be very helpful. What remains to be packed, Georgia? All of the books from the library, all of the materials that are in the offices, in the file cabinets. Okay. Um, I don't know, Martha, if you still have music in that file um, cabinet in the closet, but that would be need to be emptied so we could move that. Sure, um, I do. Anything, anything that's on the floor. So that's pretty much everything. <laughs> So if you, would be, if you would be in touch with me, um, then we can coordinate um, times that you would like to go over. And we're just leaving it at people's own schedule whenever you are able. And, and I'll make myself available for that to let you in if you don't have a key. And that'll be the- You have boxes? 
I have not as of yet, but I do plan to go to um, Costco to pick up some that are very similar in size so that we can stack them more readily. Okay. And won't be, and won't be so heavy when they're full. Correct. Correct. Okay. Cindy, um, the um, logistics for next week's service, you're saying it's, we just log in as normal? No, no, no. Um, what, the, for your syllabus, for your class afterwards. Oh, for my class afterwards, yes. For your class afterwards, we're, we're just going to log in like we do every Sunday. Yes, correct. And then yes. um, for the diocese one, there's going to be instructions on how to log in there. Yes, and the, I, uh, in your grace notes is the syllabus um, that was uh, sent to all of you. So you should be able to pull that up in your grace notes and click on that and uh, open it up and and see the reading for uh, the first week, which is pages um, 13 through 81 in uh, the first volume of the story of Christianity. If you want to do the reading, you're not required to do the reading, you're not required to buy the book, but if you are so motivated, uh, you can do the reading. I have a, an extra book here for Estella in case she wants. All righty. Uh, do we have any other announcements? Uh, our, we've got our donation situation set up with a new bank with Bank of America. Is that correct, uh, Janet? And that is called Zelle? Zelle, yeah. Yeah, quite a, a few people are already using it. So it's really, it's instantaneous um, from bank to bank if your bank participates and no fees. So it's a, it's a great way to send in your, uh, your tithes and offerings. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well, any, anybody want to take bets on how long it takes for my hair to grow back? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a, a pool or a, a pool, you know? Uh, Anyways, thanks so much for all of you for being with us today. It's great to see your wonderful voices. Uh, please, um, uh, before we go in peace, remember to join us for our, our coffee hour uh, right after the dismissal here. So go get your coffees and stay with us for, for, for fellowship. So go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah.